In this video, we're going to discuss how exactly the source code of your Android application, which you can write in Java or Kotlin and also potentially use XML or not. So how the source code is converted into an APK file, APK executable file, which your users can install on their devices. What's the magic that makes that happen? And the magic has a name. So the name of that magic is a build process. Software build process is the process by which source code is converted into a standalone artifact that can be distributed to users. Now, that's not the only definition of a build process. As we'll discuss towards the end of this video, uh, a build process can also result in other uh, kind of side effects and other artifacts. But for now, let's just take this as the definition of a build process. Now, it's important to understand that a build process is basically a sequence of steps. So it starts with pre-processing step. And actually, each of these steps can be multiple steps. That can be a combination of steps. And in complex applications, it can be tens of different steps in each one of these kind of steps buckets. So it starts with pre-processing. And for example, during this step, the build process aggregates all your resources and finds all the source code. And then we have the compilation step, which converts your source code into some other format, either executable format right away, or just like in the case of Java into Java bytecode. And then we have packaging. So we have all these executables and all the resources, let's say images and strings, etc. And now uh, the build process needs to package everything together into one single package that can be distributed to our users. And then we have post-processing steps. And again, each of these can be a sequence of steps actually. And for example, during post-processing, uh, we can sign the packaged artifact in order to distribute it to the users and authenticate ourselves. Now, as you see, this can be quite complex and involves process. And there's this sequencing going on. So somehow we need to be able to define this sequence and manage it. And the tool that does that in Android world is called Gradle. So Gradle is basically the orchestrator of the build process. In other words, Gradle is the manager of your builds. Now, how exactly Gradle knows how to basically perform a build process? Well, the sequence of tasks constituting the build process is defined in Gradle configuration files. So Gradle does not magically know everything, but rather it reads configuration files, some of which you can define and modify, and then it knows what exactly it needs to do during the build. Okay, so we need to kind of alter our previously shown diagram. We kind of assume that the source code uh, is the input into the build process, and then we get the APK. No, actually, the input into the build process is more than that. We also have Gradle configuration files, which define exactly how build process is working. Gradle reads the configuration files, and now it knows what steps need to be executed during the build. And then it goes and gathers you know, the resources, reads the source code, compiles the source code, packages everything together, performs any required post-processing steps, and you get the result, your APK file. Now, before we complete this video, let's just jump quickly into Android Studio and see how this build process looks there. All right, so here I have a relatively simple application. I go into Build menu option and click on this Make Project. And let's just open Build window. And now we see all these tasks executing one after another. Task in Gradle is basically one single step of a build process. So all these tasks constituting my build process. And what I'm trying to do right now is to build a debuggable APK file of my application. So if we scroll up, you can see that there are very many tasks executing. And this application is quite simple, actually. And we see that, you know, build successful in 34 seconds. There were 44 actionable tasks and 44 of them were executed. And you might ask, well, how can it be different if you have 44 actionable tasks? Why wouldn't 44 be executed? And the answer to that is that Gradle is very smart and can actually avoid executing some tasks. Now, as you can see, even in my simple application, you know, we have 44 different tasks. And some of these tasks belong to this pre-processing step that we defined, let's say, pre-build, right? <laughs> pre-processing, pre-build sounds familiar. And then we have compilation step, which will be somewhere here. Uh, compile, compile, 
cap debug now capped is still pre-processing compile debug Java with Java C. So that's the compilation step. And then we have packaging step, so package debug. And at the very end, we have post-processing step, which actually I don't have much of right now because that's just a debug build. And the result of this build process that we see right here is, let me show you, here inside my projects directory, I will do just find here name, and then I want to find all APK files. And here we are, tick debug one version 0.1 APK. That's the artifact that was created by this build process that I've just executed. So that was one example of a build process in a relatively simple application. In more complex projects, a build flow can contain hundreds of different tasks and can execute for many, many minutes. So that was a very simple example. Now, the last thing that I want to say about the build process is that the outcome of a build process isn't necessarily just, you know, APK file. I just showed you one example of an outcome when I basically do this assemble debug um, build task and eventually I get this APK. But actually I can get APKs, I can get AARs, these are the archives for Android libraries. I can get AABs and basically bundles for distribution to Google Play. Uh, a result of a build process can be a test suite execution, etc., etc., etc. So build process isn't limited to just building the APKs, but actually it's any kind of sequence of steps that Gradle executes in order to give you some useful outcome. And this basically concludes this Android bit about build process and Gradle.